Hey, welcome to the show. It's been a minute since I had a guest on, but I've been chit-chatting with Mel Carmen about a few things that we're going to talk about today. So it seemed like a perfect time to have Mel on my show this time because I've been a guest on his previously. So welcome, Mel. How are you doing today? Thank you, Molly. Thank you for inviting me. I, I'm honored. And for those who maybe aren't familiar with you or haven't seen sort of the interviews that I did with you, why don't you give a little bit of an intro on who is Mel Carmine and why are we talking today? Sure. Well, we're having a, an incredible event, June 8th, June 9th. We hope that we're well on the way into a bull run. Uh, I'm not sure I feel so optimistic today uh, as I felt uh, back in the back in, you know, two weeks ago. Well, when, uh, you know, the Bitcoin was hitting the 75, 77,000, whatever, and uh, an XRP seemed to be wanting to follow. And all of a sudden now it seems that everything's back in the dumps again. Uh, it, obviously, I, I really believe that someone is controlling the price of silver or gold, the crypto market, the stock market. I think I believe it's, it's somebody's controlling all of it. Uh, so but hopefully by June 8th, June 9th, when we have the quantum summit down in Cape Canaveral, something of major significance hopefully is in play. I know we have uh, Juan Osavin has now made the announcement that he's flying in from uh, Hawaii just to be to the, uh, at the event. So maybe he knows something we don't know. Let's hope. So let's talk about your event a little bit. What's the backstory? Why are you putting this on? Well, you know, I think we're close to winning this war, whatever you want to call it, whether it's a new world order or world new world or disorder or whatever. But I, I think, you know, we have to try to bring in some of the biggest names uh, on one stage. Uh, for, uh, basically, let's call it a world stage for a lack of a better term, so that we could hopefully wake up the last remnants of the normies, uh, as it seems that there's still quite a few of them that don't want to realize that we're moving into a new world order. But it's not the new world order that the cabal wants. It's a new world order that, that we, the people, want. And we want freedom. We want you know, a flat tax that makes sense. We want uh, anti-gravitic travel. We don't want to go to the airport and take our belts and shoes off and have people put all kinds of stuff in parts of our bodies that uh, don't belong, uh, you know, and we want to be able to just get from point A to point B real fast. Uh, we want them to stop controlling the fact that we're still driving a extension of a Model T Ford. We want, we want what we should have had 50, 60, 70 years ago is what we want. I've been waiting very patiently for my Jetsons car for my entire <laughs> life. I mean, the Jetsons is, was on when I was a little kid and I was promised Rosie, the like the maid. We kind of have those like Roomba things now, but that's not exactly yes. the same. But I would really like a flying car. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, we have to start from the basics. I think, you know, the fact that the Cabal products on the shelf are deliberately designed uh, for you uh, to get ill uh, I want to try to keep the language down to a bare minimum here so that we don't get flagged uh, and, and uh, to, to basically not have us live past 90, 92 years old. I mean, if you live past 90, you're considered to be very old. Uh, the fact that, you know, you can take your, your own life back by growing some food of, of your own in your own backyard. The fact that you can really choose to eat organic if you wanted to. There are companies out there that will not capitulate to the new world order. Uh, and you don't have to worry about reading labels and have a PhD on all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, life is too busy as it is. I don't have time to, I don't know about you, but I don't have time to sit there and try to figure out what's in this label. What does this word mean? Go to the dictionary. I don't have that luxury. I know. I'm sure you don't either, uh, Molly. So quite a few years ago, I had a bath products business. We manufactured soap and lotion and bath bombs and all sorts of skincare products. So mm -hmm. I spent like years learning about the ingredients that are in skincare products. And it's it's a could be a full-time job trying to understand all of them. And it's kind of crazy that in food, it's kind of a similar thing that you really need to bring your your Google uh, dictionary to find out what what do all of these words mean. And what I also found was interesting is that there's quite a bit of overlap between some of these chemicals that are used in bath products and some of them that are used in food. We used to be like, why would you eat that? That's like something that they put in, in lotion and turns out it's also good. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes no sense unless someone's out to get you. Right. And um, uh, because they're heavily invested in the medical industry and if they can get you on those things that uh, come in a little brown bottle, uh, their stock seems to always go up and they seem to always be driving a Mercedes Benz, which is a 
a, a a better extension of a Model T Ford because it's a little bit more comfortable, right? But it's still an extension of a Model T Ford. So in essence, what they're doing is they are literally, uh, you know, poisoning their own lifestyle because they're not able to advance either. You know what I mean? It's not like the doctors are living to be 300 years old and we're all stuck at dying at 90, right? right. Does that make sense? So we want our free energy technology. We want clean air. We want clean soil. We want clean food. We want what is, you know, put here by God. And we, we have the right to be able to speak freely. Uh, we have the right to travel at, at speeds that most people don't comprehend. People think that traveling at 600 miles an hour in something that resembles uh, nothing more than, a, you know, a bird made out of metal is okay and it's okay to go to the airport and take your belt off and your shoes off and and wait and get there three hours before you have to leave to me it's an inconvenience i just want to get in my garage and go i'm i'm there in like five minutes i'm having my espresso in rome and i'll be back in an hour uh to catch whatever show is my favorite show and what's bizarre about this conversation is that it's kind of considered a fringe idea to want to have food that's not toxic yeah, it really Isn't is. Isn't that weird? It? Like that that's a, a somewhat of a controversial topic and people are somewhat dismissive that we need to actually make an effort to be more mindful of what we consume. In our yes. Yes. Now, I know that there are some big names that we're not allowed to mention yet. Uh, he, he happens to be a friend of yours uh, and uh, that he might or might not come. We're still in negotiations. I have no idea where he's at today as far as his thinking. Maybe if he hears that Juan O. Savin, who is anti-Nasara and Jasara, he said, Mel, don't, wh what do you think? We're all going to be quadrillionaires and we're all going to, you know, go shopping for the 747 and, you know, and we're all going to be bidding on the same airplane and they're going to, you know, they're going to jack up the price to $5 billion for an airplane that costs $350 million. He doesn't, understand that the 747 along with the jet ski and the car and the airplanes and all this stuff is going to be in the smithsonian that we're going to go visit and say that's the way we used to travel in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s and so on okay he doesn't he doesn't get that concept he doesn't get the fact that yes we're moving on to anti-gravitic travel that that is going to happen in this lifetime he doesn't get the fact that yes we have government videos reading from government official documentation saying, yes, we have the med beds. And yes, I believe at some point they'll be here. And I believe I will go through that thing and I'll be 186 year old, 86 years old, conceiving children at that age and, and probably live to be 2000 years old. He doesn't get that. And so, because he doesn't understand this world that's coming, right? He's fighting it, you know? Or he's here because of disinformation. I have no idea. The only thing I do know is I see it vividly. I know some of you, I know you might be, be able to see what's coming. I know there's a lot of us. I'm not, when I say a lot, I mean in the millions. So is he here to sort of throw the whole thing off balance because he has a big following? I have no idea. What do you think of it? Are you talking about why Wano Savin's coming to the event? No. Why do you think he talks the way he talks and uh, i mean look two years ago he didn't own xrp today 107 owns xrp i mean the pizza guy had to wrestle him to the ground a little bit but he owns xrp right <laughs> is it possible that by the time you know we have the event on june 8th june 9th that X the the jasara nasara is sort of going to be the writing's going to be on the wall maybe not officially but Enough to say, yeah, th there might be something. There's, I've had shows with many people with debt forgiveness, and I've had many, many people who don't want to come on the show who have shown me the documentation. I'm talking in the hundreds of people who have shown me documentation that have literally, you know, mortgages, uh, uh, credit card loans, student loans, car loans have gone away. Well, I want to back up for a second to answer your question because, mm -hmm. and this is something that. So this is now our, my third interview with you. Mm -hmm. And I think you're the only person I've, other than Jimmy who I've ever done three interviews with. So it's kind of fascinating because it's it's been quite a long time since our first talk. And my views on things have changed dramatically since our initial. Yes. Now, one of the, I think it was the second one we did, we were discussing slash debating, is Nasara and sort of the great reset, like the same thing with just different marketing? And we, we went back and forth on that. And it gave me a lot to think about. And I know I'm of the mindset that actually that is kind of true. Mm -hmm. Both are going to happen. Both are going to happen at the same time. 
but we kind of get to choose which one we want to go to. Life right. is a choose your own adventure and free will is really about decisions. Like the choices we make all day long affect the outcomes that we experience. And so when it comes to like a Nasara and sort of the great reset, the new world order one, both involve massive changes to the financial system, both involve an increase in how technology is used in our lives. But in one, it's kind of a feudalism structure where this sort of cabal kind of treats us all like slaves. And the other one is kind of a return to a sort of personal autonomy where you can be free to do whatever you want. And there's no like oppressive little elite people trying to you know, extract our value from us. Well, what does de what determines which way you go? Like, because that's really a big question, right? Like, nobody wants to go to the Terminator Three post dystopian world. Everybody, if you ask them straightforward, of course, I want to go to the the Nasara world. Well, this is my belief that what we believe is going to happen, like where you what you think is inevitable, what you think is going to happen with certainty, is the timeline that you're on. And I've, I like to use the analogy that we've been on a train, like two trains actually that are running in parallel. And right now, people with all sorts of beliefs can go back and forth between the trains. But coming up soon, possibly before June, these trains are going to split. And one train is going to go to this world where the future is very bright and we have flying cars and we have this incredible healing technology and we have clean, healthy food and we have leaders who actually care about us. That's one train. Then the other train, though, is going to where people have been fearful of for a long time that, you know, it's going to be this technocracy and we have to live in a 15 minute city that you can't leave. And there's this sort of control mechanisms on the money supply. And you have to have these forced like medical treatments in order to be able to participate. So I think both are going to happen because we live in a world of infinite possibility. The question becomes, how do you make sure that you're on that right train? And I think the people who dismiss this idea completely every time I bring it up, I'm sorry mm -hmm. to say, I think you might end up on that train you don't want to be on. But yeah. one of the things I'm excited about your event in June is that I think it's going to be full of people who are very excited to be on that Nasara train and committed to waking up one day in a world where all of this sort of dark, evil influence has, has kind of been eradicated. Like it's it's going to get suffocated. Well, this is the reason why there's such a pushback against Trump. And because the level of disruption that he 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 will cause is going to be paramount with the capital p because he wants to give you not just the flying cars how about the flying condominium that's got two bedrooms two baths and a living room and a kitchen that goes you know mach 17 and can get you on the other side of the world that is if you want to take the scenic route you can go much faster than Mach 17. You go Mach 117, okay? Uh, what happens to Hotels.com? What happens to Airbnb? What happens to the people who construct roads and bridges, which will no longer be needed? Maybe we'll turn them into landing pads, okay, for our flying vehicles. What happens? There's question after question after question after question that comes up in this. What happens when the med beds truly are here because it's no longer a science fiction, but now it's science fa fact because it's staring at you in face. It's right there in the room and you can't deny it because somebody just came out the other side and 18 months later, their body progressively got younger and younger and younger. They were 86, but now they look like they're still 86, but they look like they have the genetics of a 26 year old. What happens when that reality sets in and is staring at you right in the face? And you can no longer deny that it's science fiction and you realize that it's science fact, but they gave it to us or, or sold it to us as, as a science fiction story. What happens to the airline industry? What happens to the airline stewardess and the pilots and the guys who handle the baggages and the guys who clean the airplane and the guys who paint the airplane and the guys that maintain the airplane? What happens? What happens to the police force who no longer can pull you over because you're doing 17 miles over the speed limit? in a 45 mile an hour zone and can no longer feed the mon they can no longer feed the monster. Does the monster disappear? There's so many questions and factors that go into this that it, it will literally, you know, th that's why the normies leave the room because they're marinating in their, in a level of stupidity for so long. And it's so comfortable there that they don't want to get into this movie theater. This movie theater is extremely uncomfortable 
and it and I so Trump is the biggest fuck you card there is going to be in the history of politics on a global level. It's going to be like the bomb at Hiroshima times a thousand. Now, the thing is, is Xi Jinping on board? Is Putin on board? Is Bolsonaro on board? Is Modi on board? I believe they are. You know why? Because at the end of the day, you have got to understand that these people have families. They have children who have children who are going to have children. And if they don't fix this fast, these generations don't have a future. So you could take all the money you have and stick it where the sun doesn't shine because Donald Trump could have very easily walked away from this thing and go buy himself a huge island somewhere in the middle of the Pacific and say, you know what? Screw you guys. I got mine. You go get yours. Okay. You you caused this mess. You were too busy watching The Price is Right and Jeopardy and The Wheel of Fortune. You go ahead and fix this. I had nothing to do with it. I became a billionaire. I did the right thing. I raised my kids the right way. My kids are billionaires. I'm going to go do my thing. You guys fix your own planet. I'm going to go buy, you know, Maui and live there for the rest of my life. He could have very easily done that, couldn't he? I mean, I agree with you. I think President Trump is the only president ever, possibly, or certainly in our lifetime, who actually cares about the people and isn't part of the organized crime syndicate. Uh, and these other world leaders who do care about their country and their citizens like Putin and, and Xi. I think that the, the video of Trump kind of visiting with all these world leaders quite a few years ago, the one where the soccer ball was, was passed, I think that was sort of to letting us know that this whole past couple of years has been taking out sort of the most evil of the organized crime syndicate, this very dark Satan worshiping, like really deviant, group that is a cancer to the rest of the world. I don't really blame normies who have grown up in this world that they thought was real and to find out that we've kind of been tricked and played. Like we all kind of woke up on our own schedule and our own timeline. Um, and I think some people aren't meant to wake up yet. I mean, if you've ever gone through the exercise of trying to wake someone else up, how frustrating that can be. And I think it's because it's not our place. This is my own belief. It's not our place to actively try to wake up anyone else. Now you can put out content and educate people and spread the word, but at an individual level, people will latch onto that whenever they feel called to do that. So I think we're going to go through to the other side and a whole bunch of unawake people are going to end up on that dark timeline and they're going to wake up there and they're going to be part of an incredible comeback story where the the dark ones are thoroughly defeated but I think there's a group of us, and I think many of them are going to be in uh, Cape Canaveral in June, who are going ahead first saying, you know what, we, we've already awake. We're not playing with this cabal business anymore. It's just, it's ridiculous. We're going to go ahead and prepare the new world, set up some new systems. How is the financial system going to work? How do you run a business when people don't need money anymore? You know, how does society operate when people still need, like, I'm not going to grow every kind of food that I would want. So we're going to have to have a system where people barter and exchange and have some kind of trade. And there's efficiency mm -hmm. in being the producer of one thing instead of everyone individually trying to produce everything that they need. So we still need to have like businesses, but in a post nasara world where profit is not the primary driver and that's programmed into us that like a business that doesn't have, isn't profitable, isn't really a business at all. Well, well how does it work when you're, creating a business just to serve your market and because you want to be a good person and you want to contribute to society in a valuable way. So I think we have to go ahead first and, and write those rules and help people figure out how do we operate a society in a world where the scarcity that was from the money cabal, the money system is removed and we actually are free. We're living in abundance. But people, I, this is another belief of mine, we are happiest when we have purpose and we have something to be excited about and something to do. So I don't agree with the idea that everyone's going to sit around eating, you know, ice cream on the couch. They might for a little while, especially if they've been working like some really difficult, crappy job for 40 years and they're just tired. Like, let's let people have a little bit of a break. And then I do believe that people are going to find some kind of purpose to be excited about because on the other side of scarcity and being forced to work, 
we, we are humans who like to be connected with others and we like to participate and be thanked for our efforts and be appreciated and finding a way to contribute as a member of society in the post nasara world. I think that's going to happen. So I don't agree anymore with the view that you said 107 had that on the other side of Nassar, when you give people all this money, they're going to sit around doing nothing. I think that might happen during the like the break where people need to a little bit of rest, but then the purpose will light people up. And this is what the humanitarian projects are that, you know, I've talked to XRP Lion about these many times and I've followed his structure for how to create those documents. So if you are planning now for how are you going to contribute positively to society on the other side of Nasara, you're already kind of maybe buying your ticket on that train to make sure that you don't end up in that dark dystopian one. Right. So like today, for example, I had to write an email to the live stream company because they're planning on streaming this live. And God forbid there's a 20 or $30 XRP uh, by June 8th, June 9th. I believe we'll probably we could probably have as much as fifty or a hundred thousand people celebrating, wanting to celebrate because everybody in that room, including one hundred and seven, owns XRP. Okay, so you guys are going to want to be part of that party. I can assure you. So I had to write to them and say, "Look, uh, we are Trump fans. We we like liberty. We like free speech. We we are God fearing people. We're going to be talking about Adrena. You know that that word that we can't mention. Okay, Adrena, and you you finish the word." Okay, I cut myself short uh, purposely. Uh, uh, you know, we're gonna be talking about all of this stuff. Are we allowed to talk about it, or are you guys gonna pull the plug while I'm in the middle of a live stream and they gotta, I gotta refund thousands of people their their money? Because if that's the case, I, you know, they don't realize that I was CCing open carbon copying one of my five attorneys in that email. You understand? I mean, that's the other fascinating thing that. We can have a trade group, industry association, whatever, a group of people coming right. together to discuss important topics that we feel are material to the financial system and to the global society. But for some reason, some of the topics that we want to discuss are like flagged. So if you wanted to live stream them to platforms like YouTube, that could be a significant issue. Like that, That's crazy that that's the case, <laughs> that we exactly. as a, there's gonna be hundreds of people at this event the idea that we can't discuss issues openly that hundreds of people feel are significant. Uh, I think that's a flag that something needs to change. And we're on our way there. Oh, excellent. You know, and I'll give you a classic example, not, not to brag, but I happen to live, I live in a, a rented uh, structure, which is happens to be a part of a bigger structure. It's a mansion, <laughs> it's a 1700 square feet. Okay. I don't know why that number keeps following me around, but it does. And uh, it's a, it's a really, very nice affluent neighborhood with you know three, four, five, six million dollar homes are everywhere here. And every fourth, fifth home has a tennis court. All the homes have a swimming pool, built-in pool. Ask me how many times I drive down the street and I see rich people dressed nicely, just like you see in the movies, playing tennis, laughing, having a good old time with their friends. None, zero. You know why? Because everybody is on the treadmill that they've created. OK, and everybody's got to stay on that treadmill so that they can have their tennis courts, which, by the way, many of them are filled with leaves. They should call a landscaper with a blower and blow those leaves out of there. OK, it is ridiculous to be able to have an RV, beautiful cars, a tennis court that you can't enjoy because someone else has put you in a situation where you become a slave to your things. I also think there's some situations too where people buy these items, home, big homes with all these amenities, and they don't do it because they actually want to use those things. They do it because they think it's going to impress other people. And, uh, yeah, it makes no sense. It's like I'm going to build this beautiful, you know, eight thousand seven hundred and ninety six square foot house, right, with a built in pool and tennis courts and miniature golf and whatever floats your boat. And then I'm going to invite you over, but I may not even like you, Molly. I'm just inviting you over to show you this beautiful thing that I've achieved. What in the world is going on with these people? What is what, what is wrong with their thinking? And I see this all the time. My my brother, who I don't talk to anymore, by the way, and I don't, really don't care. I say this publicly. I have one of the most dysfunctional families in the world. Okay. He shows me, this is about two and a half years ago, three years ago, when the market was doing pretty darn good. And my XRP was worth something. And my XDC was worth something. And all these things were worth something. 
Okay. And I, my portfolio was like $1.82 million. Okay. And he showed me his house on, Oh, let me show you my cigar collection. I'm saying to myself, well, that's real healthy. Uh, let me show you my cognac collection and let me show you my wine collection. And let me show you the plaster on the walls. And he's over there competing with the Jones is driving a $79,000, you know, uh, whatever expensive SUV. Again, an extension of a Model T Ford on four four uh, rubber tires, right? And I said, I just happened to have my portfolio open that day for some crazy reason. I said, let me show you something after he shows me the plaster on the wall that nobody gives a shit about. And I took my phone and I flashed it. I said, you see that? I said, that's a $1.8 million portfolio, dude. How you doing? And it was like silence. I mean, that's one of the realities of this money system that was created. It it was built on scarcity and this competitive nature that in order for one person to feel safe, they've got to feel like they're doing better than all these other people. It's sort of a, yeah. I mean, that's the idea of keeping up with the Joneses is like, I got to make sure I'm good enough to be able to survive in this crazy world. But when you take away the scarcity and kind of remove this need for money and this like fear of not having enough money. I mean, it's our world is going to be unimagined. I mean, unlike what we are used to, it's going to take a while to adjust to what it's what groups of people are going to feel like and interact with each other when this money stuff is no longer kind of the main sign of it. That's sort of the irony too I find about the Nasara crowd and the XRP crowd when they overlap is that you know in a post Nasara world, one to me one of the big things is that like money is no longer the center of like desire and goals because you have enough of it, right? We now focus on other things. And XRP is going to be a very key part of how the, the that works like from a functional technological perspective, right? How a value is exchanged. Yeah. Then you have XRP crowd who's well, sometimes they say they're they're Nasara believers, but then they're also like, when will XRP be worth a lot? Because I want to have be able to sell my XRP for dollars. It's like when XRP moons, what are you going to do with it? You're going to sell it for fiat? Really? Right. I yeah. Mean, well, the excitement is going to last about 72 hours. Don't get yourself overworked because you know what? Life really doesn't change all that much, except, you know, if you want to oversleep, yes, you have the ability to be able to do that. If you want to uh, take a week off or a month off and screw off, you have the ability to do that. Okay. Yes. You might be able to create some jobs because you don't have to really work all that hard anymore. But life really all doesn't change that much. But, you know, one of the things I'm telling my crowd, for example, inside my Telegram groups, there was a lady who just recently, because of my post, she posted, yes, you're right, Mel, I lost all my money with staking. There's going to be so many companies. Oh, come give us your XRP, stake it with us, and we're going to give you 2% interest a year. Meanwhile, they may either give you the legitimate 2% a year or they and they're going to make like 10% a year on your money or they're going to disappear with your all your money and they're going to go bankrupt chapter 11 chapter 12 whatever it is right so i said why not take your money you you've already got you already technically speaking you have to wait for the timeline to catch up to you becoming a billionaire we're already billionaires we just have to wait for the mexican standoff someone's having a mexican standoff with our money okay when that mexican standoff is over we all become gazillionaires Take your money and do the old-fashioned thing. It's called real estate. At least you're in control of your money. Hire a real estate management company. Now, instead of making 2%, you're making maybe 4% because you're paying maybe 1% to a management company. And at the end of the month, they share your balance sheet. Okay, listen, we had to change the electrical wires here. We had to do some plumbing over there. This is how much we spent in X, Y, and Z. This is how much is left over. And your meeting is over and you go on with your life and you'll make a ton of money and you are in control of your staking. Instead of having somebody else in control of your money, I will. I personally, not to get off track, but I personally won't trust anybody that says, "Oh yeah, come." You have to jump through all these hoops and learn this other program, and you have to do this, and you have to wrap this thing with that thing. And wrap. I'm not wrapping anything. You know, I'm wrapping is my money is going to be where I'm in control of my money at all times. That is a, that's a for sure. Now, in regards to Nasara and Jasara, it's true. The bad guys have their own version of, of Nasara and Jasara. Why is that? Because they want to keep everybody confused. And their Jasara and Nasara has a completely different acronym from what I understand. But the facts are that we have, if you go to QFS1776.com, we have found the original document that was written back in 1958 by the farmers who thought they were getting a bad rap 
and they presented it to the government, say, this is what we need, this is what we want. Okay. We are the only ones that I know of that has that document. We found it about a year and a half ago and it lives at QFS 1776.com. I don't know exactly where on the website, but you'll find it if you dig. It's there. So, and we also have a, a an actual uh, eight video situation where somebody invested $400,000 in production value to show you what a scam in a, 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 they did it on a fifth le grade level of education where they show you what a scam fractional reserve, the banking system, all, all of the shenanigans they've been, you know, doing uh, to us for the last hundred years. It's all there. And it's there also the, the videos that will teach you how to have a, a 10th degree black belt on the quantum financial system. This way you don't have to get nervous because a lot of people, they don't, they don't, they're so nervous about the unknown that they are not jumping in the pool. They, they're they getting so afraid because this thing, this thing really is complicated, but we made it simple, stupid for the masses. But again, now for them to roll this thing out to where we can absolutely, you know, have it work for the masses, they have to make it simplistic, don't they? Right. Don't I mean, they? The current system is pretty simple. I mean, the current system is simple, but this system here that they're rolling out, the average person is scared to death. You realize there's like less than one hundredth of one percent of the world's population is involved in the digital assets. Oh, I'm sure. Every time I leave my little echo chamber and I talk to people not part of this world about the changes of financial system, they look at me like I'm insane. So, yeah. 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 And the reason why they don't want to get in is because it's really hard to understand that they don't, they don't want to get into it because I don't, I, you know, part of it is fear. I would, I would guess, but I, I'm going to tell you flat out, uh, they have to make it simple. Now, the central bank digital currency, I don't think is going to see the light of day. Look, if the XRP works well, peer to peer, whatever digital form of money exists outside of the realm of the XRP, the XLM, the XDC, that is going to be used also for world commerce and XRP will act as the bridge doesn't have to go through a central bank digital currency. The central bank digital currency, as I've always said, doesn't necessarily have a rightful place that it belongs on the blockchain. It really doesn't. It, we could do it with, without. My issue with central bank digital currency is, uh, is a late, a labeling issue. And mm -hmm. that, I grew up kind of thinking that the central bank, the Fed, was part of the government and that mm -hmm. the government in the United States specifically issued our money. Then I sort of found out only a few years ago that the Fed is a third party corporation and that the government, the Congress, had actually outsourced the money production to this third party, which may or may not be unconstitutional. So we'll save that debate for another day. Then mm -hmm. all these other countries around the world kind of followed this structure of having these kind of independent entities, so in theory, theory being in charge of monetary policy, but they're the ones who kind of have this power to print fiat currencies out of nothing. Well, what if it becomes very clear that that is unethical, illegal, and, and unconstitutional? We'll just talk about the United States. And that years ago, in the CARES Act, President Trump rolled the Fed up into the Treasury, which many of us have been discussing for years now. And what that means is that the central bank in the United States is now actually a department in the government. Mm -hmm. And it's not that different if we had the central bank of the United States issue a gold-backed dollar than if we had the treasury issue a gold-backed dollar. If they are truly on the same team now and the treasury is really in charge of monetary policy, if we had a central entity issue a sovereign currency and it was gold-backed, is that so bad? No, I don't think so. So the label, I think that's concerning is this label of CB, the central bank digital currency. What if it was yeah. national treasury digital currency? Is that fine? I think that the concern was with the smart contract functionality that could limit what people could spend things on. But we already have that in the United States with things like WIC and food stamps. Like if the government, you know, if you need public assistance and you get that from the government, they have some restrictions that, you know, you got to use this money for food. You can't go out and buy like a bunch of movie tickets or whatever. So if we had a universal basic income that was issued by the treasury backed by gold and for if some of it was given as like a universal basic income this kind of assumes nasara doesn't have hasn't happened yet then i think that this is where like my concerns before about the new world order one and this like the higher timeline having a lot in common 
It's really about the intention of who's in charge. When you have a bunch of dark criminals in charge, there's going to be problems for people like us. But if you have really benevolent, kind, committed leaders in charge, then the rules of engagement are very, very different. Yeah, well, the program money is what most of us that understand how they want to play the game going forward in the near future is what we have a problem with. I don't. I have a problem with you telling me uh, that I have to spend my ten million dollars within a certain amount of time and what I could buy or when I could buy it. You know, I have a major problem with that. I have a problem with oh, I have to agree with the government. I have to agree with the people who run the world a hundred percent. Otherwise, you could turn my money off. I have a problem with that. I want to be in charge of my own destiny. I want to be in charge of my own money. All I right, back to the, so, like, so let's say the government, let's just hypothetically say the government, whether it's the treasury or the Fed, doesn't matter, mm. issued a new currency that had smart contract functionality. Let's say they said to everybody here, you can have $2,000 a month, but you can only buy food and gasoline and essentials, whatever that means, rent, pay your rent or your mortgage. Sure. Let's just for argument's sake, say that is the case. And so the government then sends you this money and maybe it even is a Masara thing where they're returning all the money they stole from us illegally being income tax and it's just getting returned. Well, that's not a problem because I got to buy those things and I'm happy to use this, this new money to pay for groceries or whatever. The issue, in my opinion, is whether the government tries to make that the only currency you're allowed to use. That's when the problem is. So Mel, if you have $10 million from whatever you've been doing, you should have the freedom to store that value in whatever currency you like, and you should Correct. be able to buy whatever you like with it. Whenever I want. If I want to spend it in 10 years, or if I want to spend it in five, or if I want to spend it in, in 50 years. And having a CBDC does not make that impossible unless the government say that it is illegal for anyone to transact outside of the CBDC. And I don't think at this point, with the level of awareness that we have in the internet, that they would be able to push that through. They would just well, that's another, And that's another FU card that Donald Trump has already publicly said on numerous occasions. He said the central bank digital currency under a Trump regime is not going to see the light of day. And I think the guy does what he says and he, he says what he means and he does what he says. You know what I mean? He, if he tells you that that's the way it's going to be. And he's also been quoted saying that we're going to get into the race of flying cars. You heard him say that as well. Right. Now, but the Trump's reality gonna, is- Trump's confident on the CBDC. It, this is where I'm going back to semantics. Mm -hmm. Is that we might not have a CBDC because we might not have a CB anymore. If the central right. bank has been removed from power, then it's kind of an irrelevant point. Like Right. But, but we still can move think, back. To yeah. But what do you think this Ripple partnership with all these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds? I mean, it's over 450 banks at this point uh, to date. Uh, you know, we, we started this uh, back nine years ago when we first bought our first XRP. We're coming up May 18th will be our ninth year anniversary. We've been at this for quite some time. Uh, what do you what do you make of the fact that all of these partnerships, are they basically just capitulate? basically making them feel warm and fuzzy because they know, meaning uh, Ripple knows that these banks are going to go away and they're just humoring them as we go through the motions. Because, uh, you know, when it's all said and done, the people that could see the light at the end of the tunnel here can very well see the fact that there's maybe five to maybe seven or eight, you know, financial institutions left standing when the dust settles. It's very clear. So I think that we live in a global society. We like to buy things online. And a lot of times these things come from all sorts of places. So we need to have a global economy and a global financial system that allows countries to trade with each other and allows for money to move around the planet. In my opinion, Ripple is architecting the, the payment rails of the new financial system. How will value be moved between countries, between banks? Um, Brian Brooks is a has famously been interviewed saying that, you know, crypto is not a threat to currencies. Crypto is a threat to banking. And so I think that what Ripple's doing is they're sort of leading the next revolution in terms of the money system and the, the banks that want to have a role in this blockchain-based digital asset world are figuring out how to do that because the systems they had before from correspondent banks to fractional reserve lending, all that's going away. And they're going to either have to 
pivot and adapt or they're going to become obsolete. We've seen throughout history. I mean, horse and buggies used to be a big thing. You know, people used to travel around in horse and buggies a lot. Fax machines. That's exactly, a big thing. That's exactly correct. When, when, when they invented the Model T Ford, there's a bunch of guys saying, what are you, crazy? What do you need that for? We got horse and buggies. We don't need that. People right? used to use fax machines all the time. There's a pretty big industry in the fax machine production world and the paper with the little holes in it. Now right. that's all gone and it's a distant memory. So the world evolves and money evolves and the financial system evolves. And I think Ripple may end up having a role similar to a central bank and that they maybe set the monetary policy for the United States. Maybe not. They seem to be pretty connected with the U.S. financial system, particularly the Treasury and Rosie Rios and sort of these leaders who are in charge of determining things moving forward. The question at hand, though, is whether or not like the nefarious intentions that have been part of the money system in history, are those people gone? Which is why I want to ask you a question, Mel, because one of mm -hmm. the expressions you say more than I've heard you say any other one is this idea of kabuki theater, which I interpret that to mean in some cases, we're kind of watching a movie play out so that it's kind of like boiling the frog, like you want people to be able to slowly wake up and accept these things. But that kind of implies that the outcome is already predetermined and we're just sort of watching theatrics. So do you think like it's already a done deal and sort of the good guys have won or and it's Kabuki I Theater or are we still fighting? Yeah, I think we're winning by a, a, a massive score of like 100,000 to like two. All right, I'll give the I'll give the the Klaus Schwab the benefit of the doubt. Let's say they scored two goals at most. I personally don't think it's them. Uh, if you look at who they are uh, and look at all the anomalies and look at uh, um, uh, Biden and look at uh, the people around Biden and and you know when they had the uh, the union uh, uh, speech, it looked like Kamala Harris had gills for crying out loud. You have to be pretty blind, deaf, and stupid not to be able to see that. Now, if you want to look at that and say that's normal, that's perfectly okay. You're entitled to that stupidity. I'm not going to go there, okay? But the reality is I think these people have already been dealt with. Uh, the white hats are in control in the sense that, yes, these people are still making bad decisions because we have to get to an 80-20 situation. What is an 80-20 situation? We got to get 80% of the people to snap out of their media-induced comas so that we could go into the new system, right? That's why I always said you have, you know, you have to get the eggs up to fifteen dollars, and you have to get a gas gallon of gasoline up to ten dollars for people to snap out of it. And say, okay, enough is enough. I've had people call me after I made that. I, sometimes I think that they're actually listening to me. Say, like, great idea, Mel. Let's get the eggs up to you know whatever. <laughs> somebody called me. Somebody <laughs> called me from New York and Manhattan. They said, Mel, you're not going to believe this. I'm at the grocery store right now and I'm looking at a box of eggs for twenty one dollars. A twelve dozen eggs for twenty one dollars. Okay, so are they listening to us and say yes? Let's do that. Yes, the eggs up to twenty one dollars. Right? Who knows? But the, the facts are we got to wake up. We can't go into a situation where there's 60% awake and 40% are still asleep, refusing to wake up because they don't want a civil war. That's why they give you the clone. That's why they have Joe Biden scratching his neck and it wrinkles and his forehead is wrinkling. And the lady on the video that's watching the video of Joe Biden's forehead wrinkling ridiculously on camera for the world to see, saying, oh, my God, look at that. And you can't deny that, but yet there are normies that if there was a, you know, a spacecraft that landed in their backyard and seven extraterrestrials came out of it, sat down and had a picnic for five hours and then decided to leave, they would deny that that entire thing took place. So this is what we're dealing with. You understand? So that's why it's so convoluted. That's why I call it a kabuki theater. I mean, look. You, you don't have to be a science major in human anatomy to understand that this guy we call Biden, the, who's supposedly the president of the United States of America, is not who we think he is because the earlobes are different. The lips are different. The guy, the original guy had a birthmark. This guy doesn't have a birthmark. The original guy was righty. This guy is lefty. You, you understand? The, this guy didn't have a mask that wrinkled. This guy has a mask that wrinkles, whether it's an actor, a robot, a clone. It doesn't matter. We know it's not him. 
Have do I believe that there have been things going down in Guantanamo Bay? Absolutely. Why did they expand Guantanamo Bay by a factor of like more than double or triple if nothing was to go on there? What would be the need for that? I'm an ask call. I ask a lot of questions. I mean, one of the things that's happened even recently with this Hollywood and music industry stuff, right? And we're sort of seeing that a lot of these celebrities that many people have given such reverence to, if you put that next to a Biden type person where Americans and people in the world have historically given a lot of importance to the president of the United States, like we treat these people like they are better than us and kind of put them on a pedestal. And to sort of watch that, you know what, a lot of these sort of heroes, like especially in this sort of celebrity Hollywood world, finding out that they're actually really not good people at all, I think is going to help reprioritize what people think about who we look up to and who we admire. And we should admire people for their positive contributions and their attitude and how kind they are than necessarily how famous they are, how much money they made. Yeah, look, at, at the end of the day, um, it, it all comes down to waking up the remnants of who hasn't woken up yet. Uh, and that tells me that we're not exactly there. We might be at 70-30, but we're not at 80-20. So if we're 80-20, they may very well roll, roll out in the Sarge Asar. And then let me ask you a question. If we all believe in the Sarge Asar, if we all want a flat tax, if we want the IRS to go away, which is an illegal entity that was registered in Puerto Rico in 1948, they have nothing to do with the federal government, what is the difference between the IRS and the Italian mafia? The IRS is tied to the American government, tied to judges and jail cells that they can convict you and put you... The only two differences... The only two differences, the Italian mafia does not, is not tied to the judicial system in Italy, and they don't have access to put you in a jail cell. That's it. So they were given a franchise to harass the American people on, on wages earned that are illegally taxed, and nobody, and I've had two of the biggest whistleblowers in the world that work for the IRS. And if you don't pay your taxes, these are the people that come to your house and knock your freaking door off your hinges. And you're staring down the barrel of a 45 caliber. Hello. I've had them on my show. My, the first one got 42,000 hits. The next one, they put the brakes on and I'm not talking about YouTube. I'm talking about rumble. Because they don't want the information to get out because we have our finger on the pulse. I mean, that's, I think, going to be the game changer when people find out, well, about the whole birth certificate thing and then the tax system, because that has really affected every single person, particularly Americans, just in this, this instance, in a way that's shocking. Um, yeah. And that they've been sort of trading our birth certificates as so that's a funny thing. You know, I, I believe for a couple of years that like we had this money printed out of nothing, that the dollar is backed by nothing. That's actually not true. It's backed by all of us. Like we're the collateral. Yes. On the loans. Well, we got paper that's backed up by paper. How much ink does it take to print a $1 bill? Not much more than it takes to print a $100 bill. Right. The intrinsic value is the same. Wow. Right. I mean, look. We live in this crazy planet that we have allowed these monsters to do whatever it is they want. Now we realize, hey, this is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong, that's wrong, and now it's time to take it back. So you better get educated because if you don't, your kids don't have a future, period. If we lose, if the people who are on the front lines, which is me, I'm putting my, you know what, cojones on the line for all of you out there. I say, instead of picking up one of these, pick up one of these. This is more dangerous than this. Because if you got hundreds of thousands, I don't care. Do you care, Molly, if there are people that come out of this movement that become more popular than you? Fame was not, I actually don't particularly want it. It freaks me <laughs> out when I go places and people recognize me. <laughs> you understand? It's like, I'm not here for fame and fortune. Yes, I've become a little bit famous in the interim. I never thought I would have went over 3,000 subscribers. I thought you guys were all going to go away, and I was going to go back to selling energy deregulation. That's what I thought. I was wrong.
But you know what? This is powerful. You pick up one of these and you'll mess it up and it's okay. Mess it up all you want. But some of you are going to become much better than the Molly Elmores and the Mel Carmines and, and whoever else you want to throw out there. You know why? Because I've, I've met people who are literally awake for three years. They sound like they have PhDs on this stuff. Brilliant. I'm saying to myself, why don't you guys pick up a microphone? Simple. I mean, you just order one. It costs like sixty nine dollars on Amazon. <laughs> it comes with a stand. Of microphones. Let's talk about the event for a minute. So, yes. when is it? Where is it? Can people go in person? Can you just watch online? Like, what's the deal? Sure, we are uh, going to be televised online. We are praying and hoping. Uh, I hope that we're reading the tea leaves exactly just right. That we are going to have a minimum of a double, at least double the best ever of an XRP, which was like $3 and 92 cents. So let's say $8, $8 that would excite the living daylights out of a lot of XRP holders, especially okay. the fact that we've been the most held back token in the history of the world. And we're the one that has the most utility. We're the only one that's scalable to three and a half trillion transactions per second. Okay. We're the only ones that moved trillions of dollars and never made a mistake. And we're the only ones that moved uh, money for Arrington capital, right? 50 plus million dollars. In 1.8 seconds, exactly that number. I have the video. But but the event's happening regardless of the, the yes. price in dollars of XRP. The right? event the event okay. is going to happen regardless, regardless, regardless right. of anything. So let's talk about the event. Yes. People can go in person or online or either? Both. People okay. can go. Yeah. Uh, SG Anon is going to be there. Lewis Hearns is going to be there. Sherry Peel Jackson is going to be there. Uh, you're going to be there. You're going to be the MC. You're going to be one of our MCs. So is XRP 007, Robert. Uh, who is there? Patrick Riley from uh, Reaper Financial is going to be there. Um, Jake Claver, uh, Versan from Black Swan Capitalist, Lara Logan, 60 minute journalist who said, Screw you guys, I'm switching over to the other side. She's with us now. All right, wartime correspondent, all kinds of awards. She's going to be there. By the way, we need to raise some money. So if you guys have a hundred dollars or 50 bucks or 10 bucks, you go to uh, quantum summit 1776.com and donate because I need to raise at least twelve, fifteen thousand dollars something around along those lines to bring some people who got hit pretty hard by the new world order, okay, who have a voice and deserve to be on stage. It's not important who they are. What's important is that we raise the money so that they get on stage because they got a very powerful voice and they got a tremendous following. All right. My food guru, Ian Farrar, is going to be there from Purium. Uh, <clears throat> Tanya Joy Gibson, who is uh, who was uh, back in 1996, was a runner up for the Miss America pageant. And she's still gorgeous today. Thank God. Amber is not jealous. Uh, Victoria Reynolds is going to be there. Uh, yours truly, Carrie Cassidy is going to be there. And 107 just yesterday confirmed that he's going to be there. He's flying in from Hawaii to be at this event. I think it might have a little bit of importance for a guy of that, a guy that Comes in a mar in inside, and I believe I'm going to tell you a story about him that I think nobody knows or nobody can pick up on it. He comes in and out of Mar Lago four times a day, sometimes in and out, and we've seen the videos of him coming in and out. I would love to go interview him at Mar Lago, to be quite honest with you, but I think that he plays a very important role, even though I believe the this information is deliberate. I do believe deep down he knows that this, you know, this revaluation of wealth this debt transfer this uh, this uh, that uh, this wiping out of the debt nation and individuals on a global level you've heard tr trump saying we need a monetary level playing field but what is 107's function did you ever stop for one second to think what his real function is he just got back from uh argentina he just got back from uh antarctica what what the hell is he doing down in antarctica and argentina Good question, right? Yeah. He's he's told me specifically on camera that he met with some world leaders. Okay. Okay. Now, what are they discussing? Why doesn't Donald Trump pick up the phone and talk to those leaders in Argentina? I'll tell you why. Because he knows everything is bugged. And 107 is one of the majestic 12s that hand delivers very important messages from Mr. Trump to world leaders 
They jump on an airplane like the old fashioned way and hand deliver. This is a message from Donald Trump. Wow. That's what I think is happening. Okay. You're in a war. This is a big war. And there's a hundred million people dead from that medical procedure that most of us didn't take. This makes World War I, World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam look like a Swiss cheese sandwich in comparison. If you think people are not dying, you'd be making a very big mistake. We have people on our side. My godfather, he took it. He's gone. I just visited him for my 56th birthday, and the guy couldn't sleep for 10 minutes. He wants to always go to work. He takes this darn thing. Six months later, he's gone. We're going to lose more people. We're in a war. We tried telling everybody not to do it. Unfortunately, some of you don't listen because you trust the government. Since when do you trust the government? My mother, I got to give her credit. God bless her heart. She's still alive and kicking. Okay? She taught us never to trust anybody. We were, we were in a cash business. We were in a pizzeria business. You don't think she screwed the IRS? Every chance she got. And I say this because they're out of business. What are you going to do? Go arrest my mother? She's 83 years old, living in an assisted living place over there in California. Where are you going to go arrest her for not paying her taxes to an illegal mafia organization that was handed a franchise by an illegal government? All of this is going to go away. Government's going to be shrunk down by 95%, whether you like it or not. We don't need to be babysitted. It's about to come crashing on down. And it's going to happen very fast until right now it's still happening slow. But when it happens fast, because they're done, they have reached the threshold of whatever it is the threshold is. It's going to happen very, very fast. I agree. Now, now, when is the XRP going to be worth? I got people calling me. Mel, you think XRP is going to go up tonight at midnight? Come on. Really? Don't send me these stupid emails, please. Por favor. You know, like they ask me the most, some of the people ask me the most idiotic questions, but I love them because I want to, I want to see humanity thrive. I want to see humanity cross over. I want, I'm beating this drum as loudly as possible. They, people need to, you don't need to know everything about it. You don't know how your car works, but yet you get in it and you drive from point A to point B. It breaks down. You bring it to the mechanic. So follow the experts like Molly, like myself, my wife. Buy the XRP, put it on a wallet, put it in your underwear drawer in a Faraday bag, and relax. When they call you, you go have your day in the sun. Right now, let them have their Mexican standoff. You got an extra 500 this month. Throw it in. Don't leave it in the bank collecting dust. You have an extra 200 next month, throw it in. The end result is we all get richer. They want to keep playing the shenanigans? I keep buying every month. I mean, my broker, every time he, you know, every month he says, hey, how do you want it? 90% of the time I say, give it to me in XRP. Sometimes I'll say, give it to me in XLM or XDC, but 90% of the time. I've been accumulating like a drunken sailor. I'm going to become a billionaire just on that alone, that little finder's fee that I get. I got some heavy-duty clients that are multi-gazillionaires that are buying because they realize the pizza guy's right. They said, holy shit, he's right. I've had people pull a $4 million transaction from 40,000 feet in the air in one of those things that resembles a bird. Amazing. So when people go to the event in person, they get to meet you, right? They get to meet you. I'm not, I'm just, I'm going to hide. They get to meet you and all yeah. the other presenters. So yeah, there's right, so, so many people there. Yeah. If someone wants to buy a ticket, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. Just go to uh, a quantum summit 1776. I believe sometime either the middle or the end of next week, because we are moving we actually found a company that is uh, being endorsed by uh, Cash Patel, 
uh, and uh, it's a it's a, a debit credit card company that's been around for about eighteen years. Uh, the CEO is good friends with who? That guy right there. Okay. Okay. And it's a pro, uh, you know, uh, debit card credit card company that is not going to kick us out. Okay. You see, right now it's like walking on eggshells. So I got to find who is the company that has superfoods that's not trying to poison me. Who is the company that has a merchant account that's not going to steal my money and tell me I'm out of business? You know, who is this and who is that? You know why? Because I'm here to stay. I'm here to kick some ass. I'm here to bring humanity over to the other side. Come hail over hot water. We're going to do this. We're winning by a lot, but complacency is what will be our downfall. If we get too comfortable and say, no, you know, we're winning by 100,000 to two, let's relax. We have paid these people quadrillions of dollars. And if you don't think that they can create the where wherewithal to come back and kick our ass, you'll be making a very big mistake. That's why I work 17, 18 hours a day, every day. Giving up is not in my nature. Well, I am looking forward to seeing you again in person. I got to meet you last year at XRP Las Vegas, and there's going to be so many other cool, actually friends of mine who I haven't gotten to meet in person yet. XRP Line will be there. Versana I haven't met in person yet. Jacob hung out with a whole bunch. Yeah. So it'll, it's going to, I'm looking forward to it at a personal level, but I think also intellectually, yeah. it's going to be really incredible. Yeah. To My so good friend, uh, Jim Gale from foodforestabundance.com, who he's a preacher in, in telling people, Stop growing lawns and start growing food, okay? You don't need these lawns with all this pesticides. Oh, yeah, look at me. I got a beautiful lawn. Big deal. You could be growing food to feed your entire family on less than half of that. Great point. Makes sense to me. And we're going to talk about this type of stuff too as well. Absolutely. We're, we're going to go from A to Z. We're going to put some people on board. On, on We're going to have a panel of three and four. Uh, not three and four, two and three on stage that may, maybe, you know, might be a good mesh or might be a bad mesh. I don't realize I'm flying by the seat of my pants, but I'm going to, we're going to put out a show that people are going to talk about forever. And we're thinking October will be quantum summit part two. You know why? Because I don't believe even though we may have a $10 XRP, I don't think we're going to be exactly where we want to be. We're going to have, Quantum Summit Part Part One, Part Two, Part Three, Part Four, until we get in the Sara Jasara. You know why? Because we want it, we demand it, and we will win. What a perfect way to wrap this up! All right, I'll put the link in the description for people who want to check out tickets to the event, and we'll stay tuned for more updates as you announce additional speakers and we get closer to June. Thank you for having me. It was wonderful. I had a, had a great time. Always. All right, I'll talk to you soon.